Why, hello, everyone. My name is the Bride, and this is the Bored Cyborg. Bitch. Welcome back to yet another horror film review. This time we're taking a look at Unhinged from 1982. That rhymed. Which is a slasher by a director named Don Gronquist, who only directed one other film besides this one, thank Christ, Unhinged. I am going to try my best to not become unhinged during this review. This movie follows three teenage girls who are on their way to a music festival and along the way get into an accident in a scene that goes on and on and on forever. They're driving through a wooded area. It's cutting back and forth between an overhead shot and cutting back into them, making fucking terrible jokes, smoking weed, cut back out, cut back in. It reminded me of a movie called Manos, Hands of Fate, and I'm sure many of you know what film I'm talking about. It's renowned as one of the worst films of all time, and I concur, it is one of the worst films of all time. And the opening sequence to this just completely reminded me of that. It's just five to six minutes of them driving, and driving and it's so boring until they get into a car accident and I was like yay something happened so one of the girls the the lead girl I don't know any of the actresses or actors names in this movie nor do I care to know so forgive me I'm usually very on point with my names and all of that I just don't give a shit the main girl wakes up in a mansion of sorts and is kind of being watched over by a an older woman and a dude who is a caretaker slash physician, I guess, you know, because that those those go together like bread and butter. Um, and they're they're basically explaining to her that she got into an accident, yada yada yada, we saved you, you know. So I wish I could talk about the story to this film, but there really isn't much of a story to this film. Basically, how I just set it up, that is the story. That is sort of how it plays out, is the main girl you know, as time goes on, she starts to question what's going on, and weird things start happening. There's a crazy brother that lives in a barn, and, you know, her friend gets killed off, but she doesn't really know yet, and the audience knows she doesn't, and it's just this really slow and boring narrative that isn't even worth going into. But what is worth going into is the film's script, its technical aspects, its dialogue, so I'm gonna dig right in and most likely get pretty pissed off. So this film was made on a budget of $100,000, which blows my mind because it looks like it was filmed with a rutabaga and financed with the crew member's pocket change. It, there is nothing about this film that screams $100,000, especially in 1982. I mean, that's like, what, $400,000 in today's money? Half a million dollars? I don't even, if I had $100,000 to make a movie, I would put my left testicle on it that it would be better than Unhinged. I do want to go over the characters real quick. There's an old woman who rolls around in a wheelchair and talks about how much men suck and how much she hates men. Um, and that is literally the only thing her character does. She spews out monologues and just exposition that no one cares about. And she is by far the worst actress in the film. I mean, it was so hard to even watch her perform. Time seems to be of so little importance when one finds that her entire lifestyle is so far removed. I, I, it was, cringy is not, I, is not a strong enough word. And then there's Marion, who is the daughter. I like the look of her, but she's also an abysmal actor that does the same bullshit with just spewing out exposition. She reminds me of like, she looks like a female Peter Cushing, very gaunt and tall and thin. But that is an insult to the master that is Cushing. She doesn't have a thousandth of an, the acting prowess that Cushing has. But I did notice a resemblance. She's like the female Peter Cushing in terms of her look. Then there's the girls, which... <laughs> they all suck. There's a scene where one of the girls steps on a... Uh, something on the ground, I forget what it was, uh, a tooth or like a nail or something, and she hops up and down on one leg like it's a fucking cartoon. She's like, ow, 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 and she's hopping up and down on one leg like you'd see in like a Daffy Duck cartoon. Ow, damn it. 
There's a scene, the dialogue. The dialogue I've already alluded to is ass. And not only is it ass, I mean, there's there's bad dialogue, there's good dialogue, there are good performers that spew out bad dialogue and vice versa. This film has a line in it that goes as such. If anyone ever treated me that way, I'd be gone so fast to make your head swim. It would have made my head swim. Head swim. She said it would have made my head swim. You mean to tell me that nobody on the set, all five people, picked up on the fact that she got that expression wrong? It's obviously, I don't even need to tell you, it's obviously head spin. Out of there so fast, it would make your head spin. But she says it would make your head swim. And that make, it makes no sense. How could that have slipped through the cracks? How could the director have been like, yep, that you got it, you got it. And maybe he wrote that line. So maybe it's not even the actress's fault. Maybe he actually wrote head swim and thought that was the expression. I literally had to pause the movie because I was in tears at how stupid the line was. And obviously it was delivered like shit anyway. So it just added to it the lunacy of this movie. Granted, there aren't any other lines of dialogue that approach that level of bad, like not even being an actual expression. But that gives, you an, that gives you an example of how shitty the script is and how shitty the dialogue is. That's the, in my opinion, that's the best line in the movie because it, it made me laugh. No other line did anything to invoke any other emotions. So I guess there's some good that comes out of that cup. So another thing about the like five, six minute long monologue expositions, not only is the dialogue extremely boring and pointless, the cinematography is so static while these sh while these scenes are going on. I mean, static. There's there's no slow zoom. There's no slow zoom out. There's no cut-ins. Nothing. It's just we're just going to put the camera here and let her talk for 5 minutes. I also have to talk about the cinematography. It's so interesting because this film is so bad on many different levels that you could really dig into each technical aspect and just tear it apart, which I'm about to do with the cinematography. So, the cinematography, there's no there's no sense of framing. There's no sense of where to put the camera, when to move the camera. No dynamic nature to the way that the film is shot. No interesting, like at least in a low budget horror movie, which, yeah, it's low budget technically. At least in a low, low budget horror movie, move the camera. Put the camera in places that you wouldn't expect. Just move it around and see what happens. Maybe it'll have a cool effect. But no, there's none of that. It's just boring, static dead on shots and not only that every time this film transitions between scenes this is not hyperbole folks every single time this film transitions between scenes it shows the mansion poorly framed every single time i lost count at 20. i'm not kidding i counted there are at least 20 scenes where one of the bullshit monologues ends and it transitions from one day to the next or one scene to the next and it is a static boring shot of the house in the day in the night at least 20 of them like i said i lost count and each time it happened it racked up my my anger for this film i got more and more pissed off every single time that happened and at a point at around 10 or 15 i was like okay well this is going to happen every time so i started to get pissed before it even happened and it just it drove me insane you can't think of any other transitions besides cutting outside of the home and shooting the house in the most boring way every time folks if you don't believe me watch unhinged i swear to god every single transition. Now there is one thing I could say that's positive about this film. I mean, it's barely positive, but I'll give it to it because it's at least interesting. The score isn't bad. It's very 80s, it's very synth heavy, it's got a lot of wobbly synth and like randomized notes going in and out. 
And it's interesting. It, it's the most interesting part of the film by far, and the best part of the film by far. The, the composer went on to do some bigger movies. Can't think of any off the top of my head, but I read that he, he went on to do a couple higher profile movies later on in his career. And this just has that stereotypical weird synth sort of sound that almost it it tries its best to set some sort of a mood but the film doesn't lend doesn't give it any doesn't lend it a hand doesn't give it anything to really feed off of so i'm impressed that the composer was able to put something together that resembled music so that's a positive all in all unhinged i don't say this lightly i've seen a lot of horror films in my day Probably over 1,500. I've seen close to 4,000 movies in my 31 years. Unhinged is one of the worst films I've ever seen. And definitely one of the worst horror movies that I've ever seen. And one of the worst horror movies that's in my collection. Granted, I haven't seen all of the films in my collection. But holy shit, it's bad. And that is not an exaggeration. And some people do like this movie for its atmosphere, which I don't buy. You know, I watched I watch a lot of 70s and early 80s films that are drenched in atmosphere. This film is not one of them. It doesn't have a look to it. It doesn't have a hazy kind of vibe to it. It doesn't... The music almost gives it an atmosphere. But everything else about the movie is so shitty that, for me, it just doesn't work. The music cannot save Unhinged. And the film rounds out with one of the most jarring... And random twists ever. Maybe I just didn't get it because I tune out most of the dialogue. At, at a point after 30 minutes in, I, I tune out the dialogue quite a bit. Maybe I missed something. If I am and you're a fan of this film, please tell me what, what the f*** was that twist? I just don't understand what they were going for with this movie and especially with that twist. So please enlighten me. I'm an idiot. I have no idea what this movie was going for. All right, so I also have to share this. This is some of the most ridiculous marketing that I have ever seen. I couldn't find anything on the internet that sort of backed this claim up. It says on the back here that it outsold Poltergeist before the film was banned. Bullshit. If this film outsold Poltergeist in any corner of the world, then I'm the Queen of England. There's no way that this movie... And, and honestly, what does that even mean? It outsold Poltergeist before it was banned? I mean, this film didn't have a wide release. It was a $100,000 movie, little independent film. It outsold Poltergeist in the two theaters that this fucking movie was in? I, what, what are they trying to say? It's ridiculous. And it's bullshit. And I couldn't find anything to back that claim. It's just... It, they're trying to get you the buy, to buy the movie. Same thing with the original uncensored version. It's like, this movie is so tame. I mean, even for 1982 standards, Halloween is more violent. Halloween is more violent. Granted, it has less blood, but they're just, like, spraying the blood everywhere with, like, fucking spray bottles during, during the three kills. It's superfluous and ridiculous. To even compare this movie to Poltergeist, which did, in fact, come out the same year, 1982... Which, by the way, is one of my favorite years in film. This is by far the worst film from 1982 I've ever seen. In fact, all of the film, all of the other films from 82, none of them I hate. The lowest I'd say is they're just average. The lowest of the totem pole. They're just average films from 82. This is by far the worst. I hate Unhinged. I will keep it in the collection because I do feel like it's an interesting piece to kind of rip into and really dissect and make fun of. And I, I, it's hard for me to get rid of older horror movies. I, I just, for preservation's sake, I'm going to keep it around. And maybe one night bust it out when alcohol is involved with a couple friends. But if you have seen Unhinged and enjoy it, please let me know why. Uh, please let me know why. I, I can't fathom how someone can enjoy this film. But apparently on Letterboxd, people do. So I don't get it. Let me know in the comments below why you like this movie. And if you haven't seen this movie, don't f***ing see it. Don't spend your money on it. Try to find it on YouTube. I'm sure it's on YouTube. Watch it in shitty quality. It'll probably add to it. I mean, this DVD was in shitty quality. It was 
you know, uh, full frame, didn't look good. So, Unhinged, I hate this movie. One of my least favorite movies of all time. And that's a hefty statement coming from me because I've seen quite a few movies in my time. So, take heed. I just want to thank you guys for checking out my review of Unhinged. Hopefully I didn't go too off the rails there. If I did, oh well, this movie just pisses me off to no end. So, leave in the comments below if you enjoyed this movie. If you're interested in seeing this movie, for whatever reason, if, I, if I've sold you on it because of how bad I think it is, feel free to leave some comments below and we'll get a nice discussion going as usual. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the thumbs up button and if you're new to the channel, feel free to hit the subscribe button as well as the little bell for notifications. Anyway guys, I will see you next time. Bored Cyborg, out. This movie sucks.